So we got NWA, I mean the Oakland Raiders coming to Pittsburgh, Dash. This can be a tough game. Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio with Jay Dash. Going to talk some Steeler football, got our Steeler preview for you. The Pittsburgh Steelers are taking on the Oakland Raiders at Heinz Field, Week 9. The Steelers are 4-4 four and four at the halfway point of the season. Considering all the things that have happened to Pittsburgh, I think 4-4 four and four is a favorable record. Considering losing your running back, quarterback, wide receiver, best linebacker, starting 5-3 and three would look a lot better, <clears throat> let me tell you. But you have to accept 4-4. Four and four. And this game this week versus Oakland is by far, in my opinion, the biggest game of the season. These are two teams that are early... I don't know if they're favorites for for the playoffs, but these two teams are definitely in in the hunt for the playoffs. And Oakland looks like a much better team than most people believe this season, although Vegas still says Pittsburgh has a huge advantage here, even without Le'Veon Bell now. It's weird because as a Steeler fan, we know that's not necessarily true. We have seen really bad Oakland Raider teams come into Pittsburgh and beat us. We've seen really bad Oakland Raider teams beat us in Oakland. Bruce Gradkowski. Uh, I don't remember the other loser quarterback that beat us in Pittsburgh recently with that Lewis Murphy, or maybe that was in Oakland. It's too many times. They're all running together. And the Raiders have a, dare I say, good quarterback in Derek Carr, even though I've ripped the poor guy his whole entire life. They got Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree playing well. Latavius Murray coming out of the backfield. I mean, this is an offense that can get the ball downfield and put points on the board. Yeah, we didn't like Derek Carr coming into the season. And if you look, I mean, he's still inconsistent. He's a young quarterback. But over the past two games, he has 622 yards passing, seven touchdowns, and no interceptions. In fact, he only has three interceptions on the season and 15 touchdowns. And really... I think the difference between last season and this season, outside of him not being a rookie anymore, is that they brought some players in around him. They drafted Amari Cooper in the first round. This guy has 565 yards and three TDs already, so he's on pace for 1,000 yards. Tomlin called him a special player. Oh, yeah, he's a stud. Then they got Michael Crabtree, a guy that I'm not very high on. He's he's an inconsistent player, too, but he's being targeted a ton. In fact, he leads this team in targets with 68, and he's on pace for 1,000 yards, too, Four. 183 yards through seven games so far and he scored three touchdowns as well and like you said Latavius Murray this is a guy I was high on coming into the season now there was reports earlier in the season that uh, Oakland wasn't happy with how Murray was playing and they were thinking of replacing him well that was just dead wrong Latavius Murray's a good running back look he's on pace for a thousand yards and he got a 4.6 yard per carry average so it's not like he's bad by any means and he has three touchdowns on the ground. But let's not forget, too, Marcel Reese, probably the best fullback in the game. Now, he doesn't get many carries, but obviously he blocks great. And he's their third leading receiver. He has 20 receptions for 203 yards this season. And he's also scored three TDs. You cannot forget about Marcel Reese in the passing game. And like I said, what Derek Carr did this past week against the New York Jets makes your head turn, really. I mean... 333 yards, four touchdowns, and that's against one of the best secondaries in football and one of the best defenses in football, really. I thought the Jets would go in there and win that game pretty handedly. A few boxes of ZD on that. Bad news bears for me. And not to mention the offensive line's playing a lot better as well. They only let up 10 sacks to Derek Carr and Matt McGloin this season. Let's not forget Carr got hurt in that first game. No, I forgot so, about Matt McGloin. Pat McGloin. <laughs> But look, just 10 sacks so far through seven games, that, that offensive line is keeping Derek Carr upright as well. And that's just another reason why Derek Carr is having a, a pretty good season so far. This defense isn't too shabby either. you got Charles Woodson. I mean, I know he's 55 years old, but that dude's beast. Khalil Mack, they moved him to defensive end. He's having a much better season. He's got four sacks on the year. They signed Alden Smith. I know he might murder somebody, but he's playing good football out there. Justin Tuck is one of those unsung heroes in the middle of that defensive line. I mean, these guys are nobody to be fooled with. They're stud against the run, too. They're awful against the pass. I know they give up huge chunks of yards in the passing game, but this front seven for the Raiders, it's nothing to be fooled with. I mean, they can get after Roethlisberger. 
I mean, that's what should worry you as a Steelers fan coming into this game because you lose Le'Veon Bell. Now you got D'Angelo Williams, who isn't a terrible back by any means, obviously. In fact, we got a comment on our last Steelers segment here by a user named Poopyhead. He said, dude, I believe in Williams. He's f***ing good. He's not a Bell, but he's def a starting running back. And I think we mentioned in that Fresh segment. Fresh to def? <laughs> yeah, I think we mentioned in the last segment that, yeah, we believe he's good enough to start as well, but he's also not Le'Veon Bell, and you're going to have to change the way you play a little bit because when all else fails, you get the ball to Bell. Now, that's not the same thing you do with D'Angelo Williams. So that hurts. I mean, the, the Oakland Raiders can stop the run great. We lose the best running back in football, and the one place they can be beat is in the passing game, and we've seen what Big Ben did last week. So it's really on Big Ben to come out and show improvement this week. Well, I don't know if Poopy had listened to the Mike Tomlin press conference because even he said it was going to take more than one person to replace Le'Veon Bell. Nobody in the game has the skill set that he does. Maybe Matt Forte, but he's a little bit older. Le'Veon catches the ball as well as almost any receiver in the game and runs it as well as almost any running back. You're going to have to use a combination of Williams, Todman, dare I say, Dree Archer. Oh, uh, hey, you heard something about them maybe using Dree Archer. Labriola. More, but... Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see moving forward. They didn't do it when Le'Veon Bell was out earlier in the season. He's done nothing but kick return so far this season, and people were unhappy with how he did that last week as well. It was probably his worst game as a kick returner so far this season. So we'll have to see moving forward. But I'm seeing here Big Ben is saying they are still aiming to be a 30 points per game type team. And I, I just don't see it happening really i mean right now they're averaging just over 20 points per game that's with and without ben now in games that ben starts they're averaging 21.5 points per game as an offense so i don't know i I have to see and when you lose levy on bell i don't see how that's gonna help you in your cause here but aren't you glad that he's still aiming for it and he hasn't given up hope well you're all i'm aiming to be a 50 point team that doesn't mean anything well that's unrealistic 50 points I think 30 points is unrealistic I mean you look last season man what they averaged 23.9 points per game as an offense or something like that in fact another commenter here on our last segment the Sindeen he's saying our defense was wonderful made an undefeated team look very desperate our offense simply sucked it's like we have a big block engine with no gas in it well it usually happens in Ben's first game back this is why I was not very surprised by this Uh, I'm not surprised by this last game, but this has been going on for a a season and a half now, really. If you take away those two big games Ben had last season, which you can't do, but you take away just those two games, and I doubt that offense averaged 20 points per game last season. But when commenting back to this guy, I would say what you want to look at is I'd say Todd Haley is the main reason for that, really. Todd Haley is complete garbage, and the day Wizenhunt got fired, we both said that Haley should be fired and Wizenhunt should be hired, even though that's not going to happen. But, I mean, you got to give him a little bit of credit this season because of all the injuries, too. You you missed Bell for the first two games. Now he's out for the rest of the season. Ben missed, what, four games, five games, something like that? Four games. Four games. And Bryant missed four Bryant games. missed five games, obviously. Oh, yeah, five, you're right. Yeah, so. Antonio Brown's been a crybaby the last couple of weeks. Marcus Pouncey done for the season, obviously, and a lot of injuries to the defense, which doesn't have to do with points scored or anything. So I completely agree with this guy, but I'm going to give him a little bit of credit this season, but I think it all stems from Todd Haley, no doubt. I mean, I understand last year the Steelers had some struggles as far as being consistent on offense, but this year, we said it on the recap, they've had... All their offensive players available for all of, what, 22 minutes this entire season? Something like that, yeah. So, yeah, that is the biggest reason why I think you're seeing a lot of these struggles from this offense. I know in the New England game we didn't exactly light it up. Neither did we in the the St. Louis game. But you've seen what we could do in the San Francisco game when this offense starts clicking. I didn't like how they shut it down pretty much after the first half. But I still think they can get it going. I still think Ben can lead this offense. He's a good enough quarterback. He has the weapons. 
they have to put the right philosophy around him. Let him run some no huddle now. Let him control the flow of the game a little bit better. You don't have that running back that can just dominate and do whatever he wants almost every time he touches the football. So you're going to have to let Ben kind of almost, it's going to be like a chess match. He's going to have to play that Tom Brady type role where he goes out and really just controls everything that the offense does. I think he can do it. I mean, I think he can do it. I just got to see it first because, like I said, it's very inconsistent with this Steelers team. Everything they say they are offensively just hasn't been seen over the past year and a half. Well, anybody who thinks this is going to be a, an easy win for Pittsburgh is sadly mistaken. We've pointed out many things as far as Raiders' defense being beast. Derek Carr's coming into his own. I know young quarterbacks typically struggle against the Steelers' defense, but is that a Keith Butler thing? And We know it was a Dick LeBeau thing. Can Butler take advantage of a young quarterback in Derek Carr and a quarterback of Derek Carr's caliber? It's not like he's Zach Mettenberger or, you know, some Colin Kaepernick, some douche coming out of nowhere who got good for a little bit and then was terrible again. Carr's put it up in the air, and I think this is going to be a really big test for the Steelers' defense. I know we... What we, one of the guys commented about our defense making the Bengals' offense look ordinary or, you know, uncomfortable. Yeah. That was a division game. So let's see if we can do it against a good offense who's not in the division. Because we know the Bengals, the Bengals know us. So that didn't surprise me as much as other people. But I want to see this defense shut them down. I think they can. It's oh, at home. You know what I mean? You, you would think that they could do it. Look, Oakland's one of the better offenses that they're, they've faced so far this season. Outside of the Patriots, maybe the Bengals, and the Cardinals, who they went out and <clears> shut <throat> down pretty much. But I trust this defense completely. If you look over the past seven games... They haven't let up more than 23 points in any game, and they're averaging 17 points allowed per game over those seven games as well. This defense is on top of their game right now, and you said before before we started recording here that Stephon Tuitt is starting to practice now. Yeah, Will Allen and Stephon Tuitt are back at practice. Mike Mitchell, though, is going to be in concussion protocol, so that doesn't mean he's out. But it does mean it'll probably be Friday before we really hear anything definite on Mike Mitchell. And I never thought I'd say this, but if Mike Mitchell misses the game, that's a big loss because he has been playing great this season. But getting Stefan Tuitt back would be huge as well because they got to get to Derek Carr in this game and not let him do what he did these past two weeks. They got to get to him quick, too, because he has a quick release. They do do some seven step drops out there do, in Oakland do. and push the ball down the field. But they get the ball out of Carr's hands really quick. And you talked earlier how they haven't let up a lot of sacks. That's a combination of good line play and getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands and getting it into his playmaker's hands. They do that very well. Not as well as, you know, Tom Brady and company or maybe Aaron Rodgers and company. But that's part of their offense. And the Steelers are going to have to get pressure with their front four. I'm the, the linebackers might need to hold back a little bit and maybe not be as aggressive. They might need to drop into some cover two and just try to get pressure with Tuitt, Hayward, McClendon, and McCullers. Who do you think is going to be the backup running back? We know we all know D'Angelo is number one now. Is it going to be Jordan Todman? Is it going to be Isaiah Pede? Is it going to be Dree Archer? Well, I think if Dree Archer gets involved, it's not going to be as a backup running back. He'll, they'll get him involved in different ways. And Isaiah Pede... He just came in. I think we heard Tomlin say that he's still got to learn some things. And we see this. When they bring guys in, they usually don't play them immediately. They give them a week to learn some things, and then they start playing them. So I'm going to have to go with Jordan Todman in this game. I think we did see him earlier this season. The preseason. I think he might have Maybe ran a little bit early in the first two games. Yeah, so I would have to believe it's going to be Jordan Todman as our backup running back, but I'd have to believe D'Angelo Williams is going to be the feature back. It's not like they're going to run a running back by committee or anything. With Le'Veon Bell down, D'Angelo Williams, like this commenter said before, poopy head, <laughs> poopy. that he is a starting running back. Now that Le'Veon Bell went down, he is going to be the feature back out there. Listen, D'Angelo was leading the league in rushing with 204 yards and three touchdowns after the two weeks where he was our starter before Bell came back. So there's no reason to think he can't at least produce in this offense. He had 71 yards last week as well on nine carries. Of course, most of that coming on that 55-yard run. He looks like he scampers when he runs. Does he look like... 
a fat skinny guy to you. I don't, I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to say this. But like uh, he's so beast in the chest and like the neck when you see him. But he almost he kind of runs like a skinny guy, man. He's got a little fleet of foot, but his upper body is just beast. It's hilarious looking at this guy play football. I will say this: he was my favorite player when he was in college. I followed this guy for four years in college because he was a four-year starter in Memphis. And so you lived in Memphis? No. Well, you said you followed him. I thought. I mean, I thought I maybe you went around. to like away I just games, his and games, hung out at campus, stalked him from afar. I was a little confused. Sorry. No, listen. I wanted the Pittsburgh Steelers to draft this guy. No doubt. I was pumped, and I was hoping they were going to draft him, and they didn't end up doing it. He went to Carolina, and I really hated how they used their running backs out there with Jonathan Stewart and D'Angelo Williams. They had that one big season where they both had a thousand yards. I, think I so, believe. Yeah. But outside of that, I mean, over the past. What, four years, I'd say? D'Angelo Williams really didn't look like a great player, and he missed some time as well. That's another thing we got to look at. D'Angelo Williams misses time, so is he going to last all season? But he does look a lot better in the Steelers' offense than he did out in Carolina over the past handful of years. Yeah, Carolina's O-line was kind of beat up over those couple of years, and they were wearing down a little bit, a couple old guys getting out of there. Well, after I seen what Mike Mitchell did coming from Carolina, I didn't have that high hopes. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes with running backs and players in general, when they only play a little bit, they seem to get injured more sometimes. And, I mean, that's hard to say or prove or anything. I just kind of I, I see it sometimes where when you get into that flow and you're playing every day, your body's getting used to it, you know. When you're not fresh, especially for a running back, they would bring Williams out of the game down there in Carolina for two, three drives in a row. His legs are cold. Now he's got to go back out there and run again. You know, that's going to lead to an injury. So when you have two really, really good backs like they did, to me they should have just dealt one for another part to their team and let the other one be the feature back. You use a committee when you have two bad backs. When you have two number one backs, it actually, I feel like, takes away because a running back needs to get in a rhythm, and limited carries is not good for a running back of their caliber. Well, I tell you what, having a second number one running back doesn't hurt right now, does it? No, not at all, but I wouldn't consider Williams a starter. I mean, on a lot of teams, yeah, yeah. but not every team. You know, he's not a dominant quality like he was back when him and Stewart were young. I mean, not every team, but name me 10 teams that would start the running back they have over him right now. I mean, now. he was a free agent, and the Steelers were the one of a few teams that actually went after him. So there's a lot of football teams that felt like he didn't that have much before. left in the what tank. What about right now, though? I mean, there's a lot of running backs that haven't panned out this season. You know what I mean? Yeah, it happens. It, running back is a weird position. You could be a nobody and have a beast year, and you could be beast and have a nothing year. I'm sure everyone in the AFC South would take this guy to start on their team. Probably, yeah. So what offensive weapon outside of Ben would you feature in the game this week? Well, I mean, it it has to be Dre Archer, right? No, Antonio Brown. <laughs> uh, I'd have to go with Antonio Brown. I know he's been a crybaby over the past several weeks, but we know what this guy can do. And they, this is a guy you featured when Le'Veon Bell was healthy, too. You featured both of them. Believe now, it. <clears throat> it's just the Antonio Brown, although Martavis Bryant... He's looking like a guy that could be featured, too, although he had a down game last week and made a couple mistakes himself. With this Oakland pass defense, you think Ben can get 300 yards passing? Oh, he's going to have to if they want to win this game, really, in my opinion. I mean, that's the way you got to go out and beat the Oakland Raiders because I think they're going to be going out and passing as well. And I think this team can put up some points. So I think Ben's going to have to go out there and do the same thing and – not turn the ball over. you got to hold on to the ball in this game. I've seen the Raiders. I've, I've tried to watch a little bit of highlights I've seen the last couple days. They take Charles Woodson from the safety position when they're deep in a red zone territory, and they put him on the team's best wide receiver to try to shut him down because in short field, you know, his athleticism isn't as big of a problem for him. Who would you put him on if you're the Raiders, Brown or Bryant? I mean, who are you trying to shut down? Are we in the, in red, the zone? red zone? Yeah. If the Steelers are at the five-yard line, you know, they're going to put Woodson on either Brown or Bryant. Who are you trying to jam at the line? Probably Bryant because he, he'd be – I know he's not a red zone target really for the Steelers because every touchdown he has goes for 90 yards. <laughs> but he – eventually he's going to be a huge red zone target in my opinion. So I would say him, but you really haven't seen that fade to Martavis Bryant from Big Ben at the five-yard line yet. Yeah, I agree. It's weird. 
The Steelers just don't do that pass a lot. They score in different ways. <laughs> dude, they used to do it with Heinz Ward all the time. Yeah, Big Ward Ben to Heinz beast. Ward. It was ridiculous, dude. He's like the smallest receiver on the field, and they throw this fade on third and five, or third and goal from the five-yard line, and I'm just praying he catches it. And he did come up with it many a times. I just thought that was the worst play ever. Yeah, but it worked. It did. It was like the halfback I mean, sweep Hines on Tecmo Ward Super Bowl. Hines Ward doesn't jump. He's a great receiver. Well, he doesn't have an ACL. He can't jump. That's what jump. I'm saying. It was, <laughs> it was just the most ridiculous play. They just laid it in front of him, and he got there, man. That was perfect. I'd rather run the shotgun pitch. Well, what's your key to victory this week? Key to victory? I think the, the passing game got to get going. Martavis Bryant got to have a better game than he had last week. He dropped that touchdown pass. He got hit in the face with a ball. Antonio Brown had a drop pass in that game, and he hasn't been playing as well since Ben originally went down, and they need to find a third receiver out there, someone that Ben can trust, because like you said before, Heath Miller might be staying in the block a little bit more. Yeah, I heard, I think it was Bob Labriola said that the Steelers are tinkering with formations where Archer might split out wide and they're going to just move Heath back in an H-back type formation where he could either block or leak out of the backfield right. a little bit maybe for a screen pass. Yeah, but th th they're going to have to find another check down target here. I know D'Angelo Williams had those four receptions for 39 yards last game, but I don't think he's a, a guy that really is a consistent check down guy. He's not a huge guy in the passing game. So they got to find a third receiver out there. And they really got to take care of the ball and start scoring points. I, we've seen it versus San Francisco. We've seen it, what, three times, four times last season. They got to get more consistent with this crap. Over or under three offensive touches for Jerry Archer? Under. You won't even see him on offense. When they came into the season, they were saying all these things about how they were going to get him involved. And they haven't even put him in the game on offense yet. Dude's Under. beat. I think my key to victory, Antonio Brown getting back to being Antonio Brown. I want to see a big game from Brown. And I know Bryant might catch a deep pass, but I want to see a 10-catch, 150 yards, two or three touchdown performance from Antonio. He goes out there every week and claims he's the best receiver in football. And he looked like it, you know, for two and a half seasons or something like that. He was. He was the best receiver in football, especially last year. Two seasons and two games. But this season, even early in the year with Ben, he was getting a lot of catches. But as soon as Ben went down, his production dropped. I know the quarterback play was horrible. But even with Ben back this week, he didn't get his 5 for 50. His streak of 1 is now broken. So he has to start all over again. Let's put your money where your mouth is, Brown. You wanted a new contract. You were playing well at the beginning. Let's get it started again. You got to pick your game up with Le'Veon being out. So I want to see AB go out and put up a just almost historic performance this week. If he's going to do it, Ben got to improve. How many times did the Steelers score at least 30 points this season? None. Did they score it? I think, what, 29 against San Fran? No, 43. Oh, 43. They had 29 in the first half. Yeah, just one time. So now's the time to go. This is a huge game. You got to win this game. If you don't win this game, you got the Oakland Raiders sitting at 5-3, and three and you're sitting at 4-5, and five and you're on the outside looking in for the playoffs. They're already above us. We can't let them get any higher. Please believe. What's your official prediction? The J-dash prediction, which never comes true. I don't know what this Oakland Raiders offense is going to look like. They had trouble versus good defense this season up until last week. I thought they were going to have trouble last week, and they went out there and smoked that New York Jets defense. And the Pittsburgh Steelers defense has looked great over the past seven games. I mean, a little bit of a letdown versus the Chiefs there. So something's got to give. Either the Oakland Raiders aren't going to have a good game, obviously, or the Pittsburgh Steelers defense isn't going to have a good game. And I'm going to side with the Steelers defense again. They always seem to surprise you. So I'm going to go with Pittsburgh 24, Oakland 16. Mm, low scoring. I predicted a 38-31 victory, I think, for Pittsburgh last week. I'm going to keep those high offensive numbers rolling this week. Roll with it. I think Pittsburgh wins this game 30-21. to I think the offense gets it going early and often. Uh, Oakland Raiders will get some garbage time points. They'll probably punch a touchdown in near the end of the game, but I think Pittsburgh will already be up so much that it won't really matter. If you're up 30-14, to 14, you know, and they punch one in the end zone with 30 seconds left, you're not too concerned with it. I think Big Ben is pissed off after last week, and he starts chucking the ball around. Antonio is going to be my player of the game, just like I predict. Steelers get a much-needed win to stay in the playoff. 
Hunt, because let's face it, they lose too many more games and they're going to be out of it. Seven games is the max you're going to lose to still make the playoffs. I don't think an 8-8 eight eight team is going to make it. In the AFC, I'd have to believe so, yeah. I think there'll be a 7-9 and nine division winner in the NFC. So, the, the well, I mean, the Colts division, they're 3-5 oh, yeah, and, so. and leading, but you can't. You might see a 6-10 and 10 winner. That's a division winner, though. That's not a wild card team. We can't do nothing about that. Cry about it like Pirate fans, maybe. Get the hell out of here. Anything else you got? Yeah. What Pirate fans were crying about anything? Every single Pirate fan cried because they said it was unfair that we had to play in a one-game elimination game. What, did, seeing I'm a Pirate fan. Did you hear me cry be- about Every that? time we talked about it, you're like, it is BS, dude. Except for you used words I can't say on the show. You're just making stuff up. Oh, you get out of here. You're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. You're Go back and it, listen dude. to the segments, man. You're losing it. Every time I mentioned it, you said I, it was I mean, BS. I said it does suck for anyone, but I said it's what you got to do. It's part of the game. I never said, oh my god, this sucks, the pirate's unfair. <laughs> what? I don't know what you're talking about. All you crybaby pirate fans. All you did was <clears throat> cried over the past five weeks when Roethlisberger was out. If anybody's a crybaby here, it's What you. did I cry? I didn't cry about anything. I hated on Vic. You cried about I everything. I didn't cry about anything. I hated on Vic and told you he was garbage and I was right. That's what I did. Ben's won more playoff games in one playoff year than Vic has in his life. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Well, we went from the wild card to the Super Bowl. So one, two, three, four in one year. That's probably more than Vic's won in his whole life. Well, he life. went to the championship a couple times. Once, at least. He won a couple playoff games. Dude, I don't man. know. Who cares? <laughs> wrap it up. Fans, if you know how many playoff games Michael Vick won, hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. We post segments there. Keep coming back to YouTube and clicking subscribe. I'm about to go to some dog fundraiser. Save people's lives.